Last time, we visualized a first-order differential equation by using a one-dimensional vector field. And we talked briefly about how we can get a qualitative picture of the dynamics by analyzing the stability of fixed points. This time, we're going to build on this knowledge and visualize second-order linear differential equations. We'll start with mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to zero. You might recognize this as the equation for a spring mass damper system. The first thing we're going to do is try and break this equation up into two first order differential equations. To do this, I'm going to introduce a new variable y to be equal to x dot. That'll be one equation. To get the next equation, I'll just differentiate. dy dt is equal to x double dot. And what's x double dot? Well, from the equation of motion, it's minus k on m x minus c on m x dot. And if we substitute the x dot here for y, we get this. And we're done. We've converted our second order differential equation into a system of first order differential equations. Now, why is this helpful? Well, if we plot x versus y, then we can view our differential equation as a particle in a fluid again. Each arrow in this vector field will denote a velocity at each point in this space. For example, this arrow will have a horizontal component equal to x dot and a vertical component equal to y dot. So if I started my system by giving it an initial condition at x equals 2 when y equals 0, which, by the way, corresponds to stretching the spring out by two units and releasing it from rest, then the motion of this particle in this vector field will show us all the important dynamics of our spring mass damper system. Notice that as time goes on, the damper dissipates the energy from our system and we get this beautiful spiral shape. But to understand where this spiral really comes from, it will require a bit of mathematics. So, let's go back to our system of equations and put them in matrix form. The first equation is x dot is equal to 0 x plus 1 y. And the second equation is y dot is equal to minus k on m x minus c on m y. And there we go. We have our matrix equation d dt of capital X is equal to A times capital X. This is a really useful format to put our second order linear differential equation in because now we can solve it. I'm going to guess a solution to this. Capital X is equal to e to the lambda t times some constant vector v. Now I don't know what lambda or v are yet, but I'm guessing the solution will have this form. So let's find these values of lambda and v by plugging our guess into our equation. When we do that, we'll get lambda times e to the lambda t v is equal to a e to the lambda t v. Let's divide both sides by e to the lambda t, noting that it can never be equal to zero. And then we have the famous equation lambda v is equal to a v. Now it turns out that solving for lambda and v from this equation is the same as solving for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a. I won't go into detail because computers are really good at performing this calculation. But at the end of the day, you can typically expect two solutions of lambda, lambda 1 and lambda 2, and corresponding solutions of v, which I'll call v1 and v2. This means we will have two specific solutions to our equation of motion. Capital X1 is equal to e to the lambda 1t times v1, and capital X2 is equal to e to the lambda 2t times v2. Now, if both of these satisfy the original equation, then a weighted sum of them will also satisfy the linear equation. So our general solution will become capital X is equal to some scalar, c1, times e to the lambda 1t, v1, plus another scalar, c2, times e to the lambda 2t, times v2. 
And we're done. We've solved our second order linear differential equation. Now it turns out that the values of our eigenvalues, lambda, and our eigenvectors, v, that we get from a matrix A, highly affect what dynamics we see. And to show that, let's consider this following example. Let's consider dx dt is equal to x plus y, and dy dt is equal to 4x minus 2y. Going through the exact same procedure we just outlined, we get the following equation of motion right here. The eigenvalues are 2 and minus 3, and the eigenvectors are 1, 1 and 1 minus 4. Let's see what this looks like on our phase plane. Let's draw lines corresponding to the eigenvectors 1, 1 and 1 minus 4 here. These are called eigenlines. And notice how the flow seems to follow these eigenlines. One of the eigenlines tries to push the flow away from the origin, while the other eigenline tries to suck the flow towards the origin. This is no coincidence. From our equation of motion, we can see that the first eigenvector is multiplied by the scalar e to the power of 2t. This positive eigenvalue, 2, means that as time goes on, this term is going to get really big. By contrast, we can see our second eigenvector is multiplied by the scalar e to the minus 3t. This negative eigenvalue, minus 3, means that as time goes on, this term is going to get really small and decay to 0. This is why the eigenline represents unstable exponential growth in the solution, while this eigenline represents stable decay. Okay, so we've learned that we can get drastically different dynamics depending on the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of our matrix A. Now for completeness, let's characterize the main features that we can expect. Well, if we have a case where we have both eigenvalues being negative, then both eigensolutions will correspond to exponential decay and will have something called a stable node. Likewise, if we have a case where we have both eigenvalues being positive, then both eigensolutions will correspond to exponential growth and will have something called an unstable node. Now, if one of the eigenvalues is positive, whereas the other one is negative, then we'll get what we showed before, which is called a saddle. Now here's the crazy part. This is what happens if eigenvalues happen to be complex. If the real components of your eigenvalues are negative, then you'll expect to get a stable spiral, just as we had in our spring mass damper case. And if the real components of your eigenvalues all happen to be positive, then it'll turn out that you'll get an unstable spiral, like this. And there we go. We've managed to reveal the big picture dynamics we can expect from a second order linear differential equation. I personally think it's quite beautiful how overwhelmingly different the dynamics can be and how easily they can be categorized and visualized. Okay, now we are equipped with the theoretical tools to tackle nonlinear second-order differential equations, and that's what we'll talk about next time.